Good afternoon, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and I've got a detailed forecast update in regards to the thunderstorms across southeastern Queensland and northeastern New South Wales, the rainfall that's forecast to pile in towards Queensland around Christmas time and a sneak peek as to what we can be expecting around Christmas time over Queensland. If you're brand new to my channel, please do consider subscribing, but let's get stuck straight into things over into southeastern Queensland and northeastern New South Wales where we've got some moisture coming in from the Coral Sea and the Pacific Ocean and we've also got this cloud band that's really been inhibiting thunderstorm activity today high cloud coverage tends to do that but nevertheless some showers and thunderstorms are now beginning to develop through parts of the granite belt and the darling downs albeit they are very weak and non-severe in nature and a few showers have left the gold coast and are beginning to pull out into the pacific ocean as well after impacting areas this morning with some light to moderate rainfall accumulations now high cloud coverage is what we've been seeing dominate the scene through southeast queensland and northeast new south wales today and it's a big problem for thunderstorm development it's good news for most in southeast queensland but a big problem for thunderstorm development so if we've got the ground here and then this high cloud coverage that streams across uh, over on top of the ground, it prevents a lot of this sunlight from getting down into the ground, which prevents in turn surface heating. And that is where our evaporation comes into effect and how thunderstorm clouds do begin to form. And when we've got this kind of blocking layer, this blanket over the ground, blanketing temperatures from getting too warm, it prevents thunderstorm development in these hotspots, which is Southeast Queensland, Northeast and New South Wales today. So regardless of the very favorable conditions that we have for thunderstorms, including including high instability in the atmosphere, decent wind shear, and overall a very moist and favorable environment for thunderstorm development. I mean, have a look at this dry slot here. That would be supportive of some large hailstones if storms could get themselves going. It's sometimes just limiting factors like that high cloud coverage that has been streaming through southeastern Queensland in the last 24 hours. That's really put the brakes, the big brakes on this thunderstorm development from getting off. And in the uh, coming couple of hours, I don't really expect much to get itself going. If we do zoom in on the satellite imagery, you can see some shower activity beginning Beginning to build from this cumulus cloud activity that's pushing in around the Toowoomba and the Warwick area. And as that slides into the Wyvernhoe outlook, one or two strong thunderstorms may develop. It's a bit doubtful as to whether or not they'll go severe, but if we do see severe thunderstorm activity later tonight, it's likely to be in the Wyvernhoe outlook and parts of the South Burnett. And considering that northeast New South Wales as well has been clear for the last couple of hours, there is a chance of some severe thunderstorm activity pushing into those locations as well, around Lismore, north to Murrawillumba, inland to Urbanville, and then maybe as far north as the border ranges and parts of the scene agreement in southeast Queensland, but I wouldn't really be getting my hopes up for severe thunderstorm activity in these locations, and even our generally very reliable convective forecast modelling, which is a high resolution look at what we can expect later into the afternoon, is very much not favouring thunderstorm activity, with a few spots around Lismore potentially seeing some stronger thunderstorms and maybe one or two heavy showers slash strong thunderstorms around the Toowoomba and the Warwick area pushing into the Wyvernhoe outlook later, but for Brisbane and the Gold Coast, I can pretty much comfortably say with a high degree of certainty that today is a bust day. We're not looking at severe thunderstorms through Brisbane and the Gold Coast. Of course, this could change, and if it does, I will run some live coverage to give the latest information out, but I do reckon we can breathe that sigh of relief in Brisbane and the Gold Coast. Now, I did discuss it in great detail in this morning's forecast update, but tomorrow is, by some metrics, looking like a very potent setup for severe thunderstorm activity. We've got a southeasterly change rolling through in the afternoon hours. You can see those southeasterlies here, pushing into the northeast of New South Wales around 5 o'clock local time, and then crossing into the Brisbane and the Gold Coast area also around 5 o'clock local time. And the contrast between the cool, moist air from the southeast and the warm, moist air coming in from the north, coupled with that dry line situated just inland and extremely high instability values. I mean, if we have look at our instability numbers here through southeastern Queensland, you'd look at this on face value and think, wow, we've got some crackerjack severe thunderstorms coming in on Monday, but we really don't. And it's all because of wind shear. Now, wind shear is a driving force that makes severe thunderstorms so severe. It's basically the change of winds at different altitudes in the environment. So we've got calm winds in the lower levels and then strong winds in the mid levels and then calm winds again in the upper mid levels and then strong winds again in the upper levels. That's what we've got tomorrow. And that is not a favorable setup for severe thunderstorm activity. And we've got low wind shear values at the 400 HPA range. And I know this is all scientific ugly gook, but bear with me here. Those low numbers are going to work against severe thunderstorm development. We ideally want wind shear values between 35 to 45 knots to see supercell thunderstorms, which are our strongest variety of thunderstorms. And you can see whilst they are marginally better from yesterday's forecast, 8 to 10 knots is just not going to cut the mustard across southeastern Queensland tomorrow. And as such, tomorrow or Monday is looking like another bust day for severe thunderstorm development. For those 
first thunderstorm lovers out here, that's going to be very disappointing news because Monday's setup is arguably as good as the 24th of November and the 1st of November out into more central parts of southeastern Queensland out here. Uh, and we could have seen some massive severe thunderstorm potential if it wasn't for this wind shear, which is really holding back these thunderstorms. So I must admit a little bit disappointing for those that want to get out there and track some and chase some incredible thunderstorms, myself included. But this is really good news for southeastern Queensland and something that we are overall much more happy to see than wild severe thunderstorms on the forecast. Whilst they can be exciting, a setup like what we do have tomorrow in regards to an instability standpoint and a humidity standpoint is quite concerning indeed and would cause some very damaging to locally destructive severe thunderstorms to develop. And once again, through the major population centres of Brisbane and the Gold Coast, they would be the worst off with these severe thunderstorms. So very, very thankful uh, that they are not going to be occurring because that would be a massive problem to the Brisbane and the Gold Coast area. Apart from that though, thunderstorms are going to keep themselves through inland Queensland, broad Broad areas of low pressure are going to dominate Queensland and coupling that with some big moisture coming in from the Coral Sea and the development of the monsoon trough now sinking a little bit further towards the south with those monsoonal airflows now pulling in from the northwest. All of this is going to combine into a large zone of convectively primed environment and air through parts of central and northern Queensland and through Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and out towards Friday the 19th of December widespread scattered thunderstorm activity is expected through parts of central Queensland. There will also be an uptick in shower activity through northern Queensland from Monday out to about Wednesday, so we watch now for some moderate to heavy rainfall accumulations through the Casper Coast and the Daintree Rainforest. But this should pale into comparison the rainfall that's going to begin to build in the Gulf of Carpentaria after about the 20th of December. You can see a broad area of low pressure associated with the monsoon beginning to draw into the Arnhem Land over the northern parts of the Northern Territory. This is then likely to roll into the Gulf of Carpentaria and then by extension into northwestern Queensland through the Gulf Country around the 19th or the 20th of December. And with that is going to bring a significant uptick in rainfall accumulations. You can see seven day rainfall accumulations here between the 20th out to the 26th, uh, 26th of December rather are looking pretty big in the Gulf of Carpentaria and along the Carpentaria coastline extending right from across Darwin out towards Nullanby, Groot Island then down through Borolula into the northeastern corner of the NT and then down through the Carpentaria coastline along Queensland, Carumba, Burkton, Georgetown, Croydon and then up towards Weeper and Oricon onto the northern parts of the western edge of the Cape York Peninsula with rainfall also forecast to extend through much of the Gulf Country and the Channel Country as well. And on this forecast here, significant rainfall accumulations making it in towards the northeastern corner of South Australia. And substantial rainfall is also on the forecast through parts of the Cape York Peninsula on the eastern side as well. But the bulk of the rainfall up there is going to fall between the uh, 17th to the 20th of December from an easterly flow that's going to pick up. Now, what this all means is, and I know I've just spoken a very big sentence, is a big uptick in moisture and rainfall is expected to occur. And that's going to translate to widespread severe thunderstorm activity, very widespread shower and rainfall activity and the potential for some isolated scattered flooding as we enter the Christmas period. So Christmas, one of the busiest times to travel into this part of Australia and basically any region of the world, but also for this part of Australia, it's especially important that you pay, cl pay close attention if you're going to be driving around, uh, particularly in towards Western Queensland and much of the Northern Territory. Pay close attention to the roads, potentially get yourself into your destination by the 22nd or the 23rd of December before, before this rainfall really does pick up and then make alter or seek alternative routes or plan ahead after the 25th of December when this rainfall is really expected to crescendo into a bit of flooding through parts of North Western uh, Queensland and just Northern Australia in general. Just plan ahead and have this in the back of your head that some significant rainfall accumulations could be on the cards. Now for other locations in Queensland, it's a little bit difficult to say for sure. The North Queensland coastline around Mackay and then down into the Capricornia coast and the Southeast Queensland coastline. Some scattered shower and thunderstorm activity is most certainly possible around the Christmas period, but we don't expect anything in the way of crazy rainfall accumulations like we're seeing in the Gulf Country at this point in time. If we do see a fully fledged tropical low develop, which is unlikely, that will then likely track down towards Queensland again if it did develop which is not looking likely right now and that could present us with a wet uh, period around the Christmas time but again the details are still pretty murky on that. Our Christmas forecast just briefly speaking is looking pretty stormy though. Thursday the 25th of December Christmas day we've got that southeasterly flow and it's kind of the biggest day for rainfall up and towards northwestern Queensland. It's kind of when everything does hit the fan up there and that low pressure system draws inland bringing all of that rainfall through. So sometime between the 24th out to the 27th and likely on Christmas day or Boxing Day at the very 
very least. It's going to be some significant rainfall accumulations through northwestern Queensland, but the details on that still a little bit murky. It should keep things a little bit cooler though for Queensland, but definitely some shower and thunderstorm activity uh, goes without saying around the Christmas period. So again, plan ahead if you are traveling, driving around. Uh, anything over 100 millimeters, which looks pretty likely now towards the north of Mount Isa, over towards Cairns and the uh, Cassidy Coast, kind of anywhere towards the north of this line, including much of the Cape York Peninsula between the 20th out to the 27th of December is now very much likely to occur, that being 100 millimeters plus, and that could cause some significant disruptions to the road network up there, which is generally more often than not pretty fragile around this time of the year as we enter the wet season. Use your best judgment and I'll keep you posted on the latest information as it does come to light. I'm pretty doubtful as to whether or not I'm going to be live streaming later this afternoon, and only I will only do it if severe thunderstorms do develop in towards southeast Queensland, which is looking pretty unlikely right now. Uh, but I do hope you've enjoyed the coverage so far on this, I guess, in quotation marks, weak thunderstorm outbreak. If this is your cup of tea, then please do consider subscribing and also leave a like on the video while you're at it. A little bit of a shorter update this afternoon, trying a little bit uh, of a newer format, just keeping things a little bit more concise. So let me know if that does work for you as well. But that is going to do it for me today. A massive thank you to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now and I could not run the show without them. So of course, as always, their support is massively appreciated. Stay safe, have a great rest of your weekend, and I will see you all in the next storm. Goodbye.